Hey guys, my name is Jason, and last night I got a text from a friend that said, Hey, you want to go up and get some gold on the Fraser? And I just couldn't turn it down. So in today's video, we're going to go up to Canada and try and find some gold. And of course, as I left home, it was pouring down rain. Once through the border, I headed up the Fraser. Once I got to Hope, BC, I headed north, upriver, and through some absolutely beautiful country. I've made it to the Fraser. we got to get down to this little bar down here. See if we can find some gold. We made it down to the bar, and here's Dan Hurd. Hello, everyone. Hey, Dan, you brought me all the way down to the Fraser. This is your first time panning the Fraser, is it? First time. So you got to show me how to do it and make sure we find some good gold. Absolutely. The water is way lower than I expected. It is like dead low right now. These rocks that I'm digging behind right now are usually underwater, even at low water. So we're going to try some new spots today, see if we can find some new gold. If we don't find any way down here, we'll go back up a bit where I know there's good gold. So you can kind of get the lay of the land here. We're working this little bedrock shelf. The river, like Dan said, is very, very low, but it's exposed all these cracks that maybe haven't been worked real hard in the past. So I think I might work in here. Dan's been talking about under some of these big boulders. They've had really good luck. All right, well, let me get to digging, see what I can find. I'm working this little crack right here. And Dan says the trick is to get to the very, very, very bottom of the crack. We got to get all these little pebbles and rocks out of here because the gold will migrate all the way down to the bottom. So this is where I'm going to try my first pan and see what we can recover. Dan's got his first pan and I, I can see the gold from here. You got a nice little flake right in the middle of Black Sands though. Yeah. Yeah, I think there's one that went back into the back there. There's maybe five or six good flakes. But this is kind of sub par for you. Yes, not, we, can do, not average. we can do way better than that here. Way better than that. Way better than that. Okay, I like it. And that was only half a pan. Well, I've got my crack here kind of worked down to the bottom of bedrock. It's awfully hard to get all the fine stuff into the pan. It, it's just my fingers are too fat or something. But Dan just threw a brush at me. So I'm supposed to use this to sweep out the cracks, which is way better than your fingers. It's like he's done this before. Here goes my first pan. And plaster gold is a little bit different than hard rock gold. You've seen me pan the hard rock cons and I go very, very, very slowly. The gold is extremely fine. Whereas this plaster stuff on the Fraser is a little bit coarser. And so I can go a little bit faster without worrying about losing any. One of the things that Dan just showed me in his first pan was the flakes are very, very flat though. And sometimes that has a tendency to kind of skate on the black sand a little bit. So you still gotta be careful, but in this, this first pan, it'll take me 30 seconds to a minute rather than a couple, two, three, four, five minutes. Like when you're panning out the shaker table concentrates with the super heavy pyrotite and sulfides and all the golds mixed up in it. My first real Canadian gold. Look at there, two nice little flakes. There's also some really fine stuff down in here, kind of mixed in with the black sand. But there we go, let it. Let me get him in my snuffer bottle. All right, let's see what Dan thinks here. Dan, what do you think of my first pan? Your first pan? My first pan. Look at that, two really nice flakes. Nothing wrong with that at all. Not bad, huh? Not bad. All right. Okay, one and two. All right, my second pan, I was trying a little bit different spot. There was some moss and stuff I got. A lot of times that moss on the rocks will act as miner's moss and capture some of that fine flaky gold. Here's my three kind of medium sized flakes from that moss and stuff. And a bunch of little tiny fine stuff down there right at the leading edge. I'll get those three with the snuffer bottle. Dan, you weren't happy with the gold we were finding down below, you went up above a little bit. Yeah, down low, we've been doing really well, sort of the halfway down the bar. Uh, thinking that the low water may have given us stuff that was even better lower, I don't think is actually working out for us because, you know, three, four flakes in a pan, it's not what this place is known for. Well, what's, what's a good pan? What would be a good uh, pan? 20 to 30. 20 to pan. 30. 
Yeah. Flakes like I just had in my pan? Yep. 20 to 30. Yeah, it, that'd be a good spot, but you know, 15 is kind of common. Do you know where the gold is coming from? On this site here, I think it's being washed out of old gravels that have uh, been deposited billions of years ago up on the, the sides of the valley. Up on a bench above because, us. Because we're so high up on a bedrock shelf, I don't think there's any hope that the current Fraser can bring gold up and deposit it there. And we seem to find the best gold deposits right below those gravel deposits that are up high. And are there hard rock gold mines all up and down the Fraser here? No, actually not. No. Uh, this gold has traveled a long ways. Um, there's all sorts of gold bearing creeks that feed into the Fraser. Okay. All up and down it, but there's a couple of really big ones, like the Quinell River is one of the big, big ones. Okay. And we're right below the Thompson River here, which is another one that deposits gold into the Fraser. And it's traveled a long ways. That's why we're finding these really flat, flaky pieces. It's been beat all beat the way flat, down the river. Yes. Yeah. There what do we, we got, get here? We got six or seven. Okay. Yep. Yeah. Still not great though. We'll find a good spot. We will. All right. It is a beautiful river from Hope all the way north, driving up the canyon. It's just these huge, steep sided V valley with the Fraser running right down the middle of it. And like Dan was mentioning earlier, he thinks the gold is coming out of the ancient gravels up on some of these benches. Now what you see here is the bedrock. And that's, there's very little gravel on it, very little boulders. It's just pretty much exposed. We are probably 15 feet, maybe 20 feet above the level of the river. But I want to go up and look at this. See these white rocks up here? This is more of those gravels that Dan was talking about. There's a little bench right up above the bedrock here and those gravels are kind of washing down onto this bedrock shelf and Dan thinks that's where the gold's coming from. I've moved higher up. I'm going to work right at the edge of where these boulders meet the bedrock here. I've got a little spot right under here. I'm going to work that little pile of gravel. I'm going to get it worked all the way down to bedrock and hopefully we can find some good gold there. Well here's a good sign. I don't know what it is but it's a piece of iron all rusty. And that was right down in there. So where the iron collects, that's where the dense material collects. Well, here's some of that clay mud stuff Dan was talking about. I've gotten some of it out of the bottom here. I think there's still some I can get, but... I've got real high hopes for this one because I got down to that clay. But Dan just brought up a good point. We're looking for a spot that hasn't been worked before, hasn't been touched. And it's going to take a little while. we got to prospect it. we got to look. But once you find that spot, that little honey hole, if you will, that hasn't been worked, and we identify it, then we can just kind of work all around that, and we'll find some really good gold. This might be my best pan so far. There's maybe 10 or 12 little pieces there. Kind of medium, medium little flakes. Not bad. There we go. One picker. Maybe eight good sized flakes. Oops. All right, that's what they need to look like. That's huh? what they need to look like. You go find that. Okay, go find that. You find the oddest stuff when you're digging under rocks. I don't know where that came from. Weird. My first golf ball find. Dan, you found a good spot. I found a good spot and I found a piece of gold sitting on bedrock. Oh, show me. I broke up a bunch of bedrock back there and was starting to pull out pieces like this. And one of the pieces came out with a piece of gold sitting oh, on it. Oh, yeah, look at that. Wow, and this is the face up. Yeah, so that, was, was, that was just sitting on top of that piece. Oh, cool. All right, well, I might have to dig a pan here and see what I can find, huh? You bet. You're more than welcome to. If we can move this rock over, we can get access to it a lot easier. Okay. But that goes in my pan. All right, Dan's got the best pan of the day so far. Oh, yeah, that's a lot of gold in there for one pan. All right, I got to go find my own spot. I got to go find a spot where I can find gold. See if you can find that bedrock breaking up. Yeah, I'm gonna try another crevice. I got a crevice I, I think I like. Well, Dan got a nice pan again, but he led me to a spot and I got a really nice pan. Lots of big pieces in there. I must have 20 pieces. I'm finally, we, we broke the ice on a good pan. So I'm, now you just stay on that spot. I'm excited to get back there. Well, I've had some really good results right in this hole right here. I've got four or five more pans that I can probably do without doing moving boulders and stuff. So I'm going to work right here. 
Well, another nice pan and probably my biggest flake of the day right there. And here we go, starting on one edge of the pan. Nice gold there. All the flakes are mostly up here. And then all the way around, big pieces of magnetite. This might be one of my best pans so far. Look at all that gold. Well, it's just pan after pan after pan. Good gold out of that one spot. Well, Dan's working our spot here, and look what he just found. Right there, sticking in the rock. Gold on bedrock. It's a good oh, spot, huh? It is, yes. Another pan and some more nice gold. Well, Dan and I have agreed this is going to be our last pan. I did really well under this big rock here. I came out, I did a really good pan in front of the rock. I moved over a little bit farther, lost it. So my last pan is going to be back kind of under the front of this big rock here. This is probably one of the richest placer deposits I've ever been on. I don't know how much gold we have today, but it's more than I've gotten anywhere else that I've worked for a day, and we've only been panning. We haven't been high bank, we haven't been sluice, we haven't been doing anything but panning, and I probably have a dozen pans, 15 at the most. And so however much gold we have is from 15 pans. It's just amazing to me. There's This is a really, really rich spot. Here's my last pan of the day right in front of that big rock I showed you earlier. Not too bad. There's, I don't know, maybe 20 pieces there. None of them are huge, but there's a bunch. So not bad for the end of the day. We've been saving our black sands and I'm pretty excited about taking this back to my shop and smelting it. So I'm gonna see if I can get this through the border and turn it into a little gold bead. Dan, I'll let you know how much gold I recovered from your black sands. Awesome. For those of you who are interested in how much gold Dan got, you see the snuffer bottle around his neck. He dumped that out. You're gonna have to check out his channel and his video. And it was it was quite a bit. I was impressed. It was a good day. Good, was a good day. day. Good day for the claim. Oh yeah. Yeah. Well, I'm gonna end this video here. I had a great time. Dan, thank you so much for bringing me out to your claim. You're welcome. This is probably the richest plaster claim I've ever been on. I think we got more gold today in 15 pans than I've gotten anywhere else. The Fraser River, you can't beat the Fraser River. There's gold everywhere. There's gold everywhere on the Fraser. So this is gonna be part one of a two part series. I've got my snuffer bottle here full of gold. And on part two, we'll see how much is in there. But also Dan and I have been saving all of our black sands. So I'm gonna take that back to my shop and smelt it. See if we can recover any more gold. So thanks everybody for watching. We'll see you on the next video.